And so uh, the windless test uh, is probably one of the most uh, sort of hallmark uh, features of uh, assessing someone with uh, heel pain, uh, plantar fasciitis, uh, because you're actually attempting to palpate the proximal aspect of the plantar fascia, both in non-weight bearing as well as in weight bearing. So we'll go ahead and have Alex lay on his back here. And the idea behind the windlass test is that uh, the plantar fascia attaches to the proximal aspect of the middle phalanges, uh, as well as the medial calcaneal tubercle. And so with toe dorsiflexion, you should actually see the arch begin to raise, okay? Uh, you may actually even observe the medial slip of the plantar fascia become more prominent along the, uh, the medial aspect of the longitudinal arch. Uh, what I'm going to do though, is I'm going to use this, I'll first impose the passive range of motion component. Alex, you okay with that? Good. Uh, and then uh, what I'll do is I'll palpate the, um, the proximal aspect of the plantar fascia to identify whether this, is, uh, this, this reproduces pain. Uh, does this reproduce any, any, any symptoms? So Alex is doing fine with this, which is good. Uh, so it ind indicates that either he doesn't have heel pain uh, related to plantar fasciitis, which is likely in this case, or it indicates that there may be um, a low irritability or acuity of symptoms that we can work out in a weight-bearing position. So let's have you go ahead and stand up. And so I'll repeat the test in a weight-bearing position. So in this case, what I'm going to do is uh, Alex has already loaded the plantar fascia with his body weight, and I will then just try and dorsiflex the MTP joint. You can see the arch raise a little bit. Does that cause any pain? No. Good. I can sharpen that then with additional palpation. Does that cause pain? No. Good. So, the issue here is that we want to make sure that we're not dorsiflexing the distal phalanx because you'll notice that uh, maybe Alex has a few degrees of dorsiflexion of his distal, uh, the distal phalanx, the IP joint. Uh, we want to make sure that we're dorsiflexing the MTP joint. So for people with joint laxity associated with that middle phalanx uh, of, the fir of, the, of the hallux that we're actually sort of sliding under to support the distal phalanx and that we're moving the proximal phalanx instead.